All right, welcome back to Retcon. I hope you're having an awesome time so far. Our next speaker is Dirk Wakeham. He is the Chief Executive Officer at Zigo, powered by Paylease. Please join me in welcoming Dirk to our virtual stage. Hi, thank you very much, Patrika. As she mentioned, I'm Dirk Wakeham. I am the CEO of Zigo, uh, powered by Paylease. And we're here today to talk about uh, the era of resident experience. You know, one of the things we've seen over the last several months is uh, the pretty rapid adoption of technology. Uh, I think we would all agree that our industry historically has been fairly, fairly slow to adopt technology. Um, we've been increasing that pace over the last several years, but COVID-19 has really lit a fire under our adoption of this technology. And we really think this is the new normal. We've in our business have seen adoption curves that we've never seen before. We saw customers rolling out um, hundreds of properties of our solutions uh, in a matter of weeks, as opposed to a matter of months or even years. And we think that uh, COVID-19 has essentially accelerated the inevitable with regards to kind of the digitization of the resident experience. So in our presentation today, we've got some industry research, we've got some customer testimonials, and then we've got some proprietary Zego data that we're gonna share with you. I think we would all agree that the world has changed. I know my world has changed. I think in the last nine months, I've ordered more Grubhub and Instacart than I ever have ordered. Uh, I frankly don't interact with people nearly as much as I had previously. And, and I was one of those that didn't interact with people a, a lot in general. My preference was always email or text. Uh, my third preference was phone calls. Um, and so I'm interacting with people even less. And I think from a multifamily perspective, we're seeing a couple of mega shifts um, in, uh, from an operator perspective. Um, the first is this historical year-over-year uh, -year growth in rent, uh, rent growth is really coming to an end. For the first time in over a decade, uh, we've seen actually rents decline uh, in the recent quarter. Um, and so that's a fairly fundamental change. Uh, the second is we're seeing a significant change in resident demographics. And we're seeing that these, uh, these millennials and the Gen Xers want to uh, communicate more digitally. And so that shift has taken place. We think our industry is going the way of retail in uh, many of these things going digital. Um, the last thing I'd just like to sort of anecdotally point out is back to this adoption curve concept is, you know, PayPal was introduced six years before Paylease was even founded. Paylease is 15 years old. So we, it took six years for the notion of a digital payment to reach our industry. And now we've seen in the last six months, the adoption of complete engagement platforms in a rate that's really tenfold over that, over that rate. So again, we're seeing a rapid adoption. We think this adoption of technology, the change in demographics, the push by residents to be engaged with in a much different way um, is forcing operators to really reimagine how they interact with others. So we think they're, they're, uh, owners are rethinking their standard operating norms. And this is really operators, investors, the strategy people, marketing people. Historically, this was not something those functions even thought about. Uh, for example, we're now being forced to keep our leasing office open longer hours. The average resident leaves their house at 7 a.m. and come home, comes home at 6 p.m. They need to be have a way to interact with you. The way we collect our payments, our critical lifeblood of our business, how we get paid, uh, the days of the little metal mailbox on the side of the leasing office and the resident dropping that check off on the way to work, those days are gone. Residents are asking now to pay digitally and pay electronically. With COVID, we've been forced to look at the way amenities are reserved. We have capacity constraints due to, due to COVID. So residents want ways to still be able to use the weight room or the gym or the common area. Uh, and we need ways to be able to reserve those amenities for them to, to reduce overcrowding. The influx of packages has, has really increased exponentially. I know at my house, the UPS guy shows up twice a day, the Amazon guy shows up at least once a day, and then sometimes even as late at 9.30 at night, we get uh, packages showing up from Amazon. So these are creating problems for owners of properties and managers of properties by having to manage the packages as they come in. Again, the way residents want to be communicated with used to be the resident could stop in the leasing office and talk to the leasing agent. In many cases, our leasing offices are closed or they're not open the right hours. So the way to have instantaneous communication uh, with the residents between the management team and the residents is critical. And we also think um, resident to resident engagement is pretty critical. The way in which residents sort of engage with or communicate with their, their neighbors. And we think the stakes for navigating this new environment are pretty high, right? This fundamental shift 
of residents being asked to be communicated with differently. Um, we think that's having a, um, a, a changing our environment significantly. The first thing we need to be concerned about, obviously, is our staff safety and the safety of our residents. COVID has put a much uh, greater lens on this topic. So how can you ensure that both your property staff and your residents' uh, needs are both safely and effectively met with regards to how you, you interact with them? The second is this notion of community reputation. The, uh, the, the presence of independent review sites, things like Glassdoor, things like Yelp, this has really leveled the playing field for residents and they're very vocal and willing to communicate a bad experience. And we think this can impact your future resident acquisition. If you have a bunch of bad reviews on apartment ratings, for example, that's gonna impact your ability. In fact, a recent study showed that when uh, researching for an apartment community that nearly 30% of Gen Zers selected a property based on resident reviews. And we think millennials are not far behind that. So the point is these independent sort of non-curated or non-reviewed um, reviews uh, can impact your business significantly. So you've got to have a way to um, you know, collect that feedback and interact with the residents the way they want to. And then lastly, we think resident retention is increasingly based on these things like um, uh, apartment features, community amenities, being able to communicate with staff uh, securely and efficiently. These are all things that residents are taking into account uh, when they're choosing to stay at an apartment community or where they're choosing a new apartment community. So again, the landscape has changed, residents are more demanding, and frankly, the all-in-one property management system weren't designed for these challenges. Um, this triopoly of property management systems, you know, these are very complex and broad-reaching systems, and their solution to this problem has largely been, well, we have a function in our system, let's just figure out a way to expose that basic screen effectively turn that monitor around and let the resident key in the information. So let's take the guest card screen, for example, and we'll just put that on a website and the resident can key in their own guest card. Oh, we need to collect a work order. Okay, well, we'll just take the work order screen and we'll just put it on a website and publicly expose it to where the resident uh, that's registered can, can fill out a work order. So uh, these are not really the right answer. These are not enterprise users. The, uh, they need much more simplicity in how they submit these things to you. And so we really believe that the all-in-one property management systems uh, that have been around for you know, decades are not really the right solution for uh, how you need to interact with your residents. So all of this said, complexity of the business, the changing demographics, the increasing need to go digital, both from a safety and security standpoint, we've developed five key recommendations uh, that we think you need to be thinking about to build a modern resident experience. And I'll go into each of these in detail, but just uh, kind of rattling them off. The first is meet your residents where they are. The second is help them safely engage with neighbors and a property staff. And I want to touch on neighbors because I think that's critical. It's not just about property staff. 100% allow them to self-serve. Um, number four, help them build a sense of relationship and a sense of community, and then provide a single comprehensive app across the full living experience. So the first recommendation is, is pretty simple. One, meet your residents where they are. And where they are is on their smart devices. And here's a couple of stats. And, and this was pretty surprising to me when, when we got this data a while back. Um, Pew Research suggested 81% of Americans own a smartphone, which is actually significantly higher than the percentage of Americans that own a desktop computer. And it was odd, we got into many of our, um, many of our customers and we started surveying their customers uh, their applications were not optimized for mobile. And the residents were saying, that's great. I don't even own a computer. I do this on my mobile phone and your way to submit a work order or your way to pay rent doesn't work on my phone. So I don't have a way to interact with you digitally. So this concept of the, the phone becoming the primary internet connected device in many households uh, is critical. The second is according to Deloitte in a 2018 study, uh, they found that 50, the average American checks their smartphone 52 times a day. And I don't know about you, I probably do it 104 times a day. Uh, so I guess I'm above average. It's the one place in my life maybe I am above average. <laughs> but I do check my phone a lot. And the average American does check their phone, again, over 50 times a day. 
And then lastly, that same Deloitte study found that the mobile phone and not the desktop computer is a preferred device for conducting online activities. So again, the all-in-ones or the triopoly solution to this, let's just turn that screen around and expose it on a web portal that the resident can go to with their PC is not the right answer. You need a mobile first solution to these digital interactions. And that allows you to meet these residents where they are. Um, so the second thing, the recommendation is to help your staff and your residents engage with themselves and with your property staff safely. And one of the ways they do that is really, well, there's three use cases. And the first way they do that is with communications. And we believe that this one size fits all approach uh, to communication does not work. And you need to be able to tailor those communications uh, to the resident, whether they're urgent, whether they're simple announcements, uh, allow residents to post things on uh, digital bulletin boards. Uh, I often told the story when I, when I met my wife uh, about 30 years ago, we moved into an apartment together and I bought her a dresser off of a little uh, posting that I found in the laundry room of the apartment community we moved into. Those days are gone. Residents are gonna find those things on, on, uh, on, on bulletin boards and they're gonna find it in a digital fashion and, and you should be providing ways for them to do that within the community to create that sense of community. The second major use case is maintenance. And again, the second largest way in which a resident engages with you is when they have a service request or a service need. We believe there needs to be a technology enabled service to do that. And we believe their mobile phone is the way to submit those work orders we, and, and provide uh, authorization to enter the unit and to provide contactless entry into those vacant units. And then the third um, uh, area here is social distancing. We think operators are looking at all of their in-person and staff interactions and asking, what can we do to process that digitally? How can we increase our digital adoption? Things like tours and repairs. How can we do our business in a way that isn't, that doesn't require human to human interaction? This is an industry that historically has prided itself on being very retail oriented, being very customer service oriented, spending uh, tons and tons of money to train our staff, to be friendly, to be responsive, to be engaging. And as the world changes, we need to um, have tools that allow them to do that digitally as opposed to in person. Our third recommendation is to allow residents to self serve. And the story I've been telling here uh, relates to uh, I travel a lot. Uh, I, I live in Dallas, Texas. My company's headquartered in San Diego, California. So I travel to San Diego every week. And most weeks I show up and I rent a car. Uh, and one of the privileges I get for renting a car from Hertz every week is the privilege of being a gold member. And being a gold member with Hertz allows me to not have to talk to anybody. That's the privilege I get. And it's a little bit counterintuitive because you know this notion that uh, you know, we wanna provide service, we wanna provide people to do that, we wanna be helpful um, is really counterintuitive. What I want is I want the ability to not have to talk to anybody. I want the ability to get my car, get the keys and go. And I believe our residents in many cases are the same way. They may not wanna to talk to our staff, and as, uh, as evidence of that, we found that two thirds of consumers in general prefer the convenience of self-service over that of talking to a service representative. Again, I'm not suggesting the service goes away and the human interaction goes away. It clearly will not. But this notion of when I want something and I don't wanna to talk to somebody, my preference would be to do that digitally. And if I really have an issue, absolutely, I want the ability to talk to somebody, but most of the time I don't wanna do that. And so we need self-service options for things like package notifications, allowing residents to register vehicles and pets, letting guests into their apartment, managing lockouts and all those things. Those have to be done in a way that's digital, not in picking up the phone and, and that kind of thing. The second is residents are highly impatient for answers to their questions. Uh, they want answers to their questions in real time. And so we think things like chatbots that are powered by artificial intelligence uh, can solve a lot of these problems where the resident can ask these questions 24 hours a day and they can be answered by a machine that effectively has been trained to answer basic questions like, when is my lease end? When is the pool open? What was my utility bill last month? What are the office hours? All of those things can be done very easily using artificial intelligence through this chatbot technology. And then lastly, in the self-service, uh, providing residents the opportunity to connect to local services efficiently and easily. So through a thing like a resident marketplace, again, used to be you would allow uh, vendors to drop flyers off in a leasing office, whether it was rental furniture, whether it was the local pizza joint, whatever might be in the neighborhood, those days are gone and residents uh, should be and want to be able to connect to those uh, very digitally and very simply where they can get recommendations for things like dog walkers, 
uh, ride sharing local restaurants. I know I'm a big user of Nextdoor and I think half the posts there are, hey, do you have a good housekeeper that you would recommend? So these are things that uh, are much more easily accomplished, more efficiently accomplished on a, on a digital platform. The fourth recommendation is, and this is the one I know I touched on earlier in the presentation, uh, we want the residents to be able to build a better sense of community. And this is really interesting data. Uh, a recent study done showed that if a resident has just one friend or some sort of an acquaintance on the property, they're 10% more likely to renew their lease. And those residents with seven or more friends on the, within the community are 20 times more likely to renew their lease. And so providing residents a way to connect amongst themselves in sort of a curated way uh, can help you improve your renewal rates, retention rates, and obviously drive your operating costs down. So using this technology to host uh, community events that are sort of micro-targeted towards you know, people that might want book clubs or mommy and me events or barbecues or golf outings, these are all things that are gonna increase that sense of community, uh, provide more connection to the community by the resident and improve their likelihood to renew their lease. So again, this notion of building community through digital is, is uh, highly relevant. And the fifth um, recommendation we have is providing a comprehensive resident app. I don't know about you, but I've got lots and lots of apps on my phone and I'm always looking for ways to reduce those and consolidate them. Um, large providers like Facebook and Instagram have realized this and they're increasingly adding many, many features into their apps. We don't think residents want to have multiple apps, one to pay their rent, one to submit a work order, one to view their utility bill, one to get package notifications, one to open the front door. They want one app that's comprehensive, that can provide uh, a solution for all of their major use cases, uh, things like paying their rent, um, submitting a problem or concern, submitting a maintenance request, getting information about the community, getting rent reminders, all of those things can and should be done on a single mobile app. And so we think it's critical that um, this, this app be, be single and unified and powerful and robust enough to allow the resident to interact in one. So that being said, um, we think that just the tech is not gonna to lead to res resident satisfaction. Obviously the tech here is critical. Having the ability to have a single platform that is comprehensive is critical, but just offering these things are not gonna um, improve resident satisfaction. You have to get the digital engagement, you gotta do it right. We think that's gonna to lead to higher satisfaction, which leads to higher renewal rates as we pointed out, which improves your net operating income, which leads to ultimately what we're all paid to hire to do is increase those property values. So that's it for me today. Thank you very much for joining me and thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Thank you so much, my, uh, Dirk. Thank you for sharing those insights with us. That was an awesome presentation. All right, if you're looking for your next session, you can go ahead and check out your agenda page or take the, time, take the time to do some virtual networking with your peers. Thanks so much and we'll see you around. Thank you.